Hey, it's Bob here, and we're working on Plug and Play, the series. And Plug and Play simply is taking a finger style pattern that you may be very familiar with, maybe you learned it on this channel, and then being able to apply it to other songs. And the reason why this is better than tablature is because instead of having to painstakingly climb Mount Everest every time you want to learn a song, you could simply take this pattern or a pattern and plug it into a song that you want to learn. All right, so I'm showing you how to do that. If you missed the series, um, the beginning, go right here, click on that link. And I'll also have the link in the description area to the whole series. All right, so here's what we worked on last week. Here's what we're working on today. If you were lucky enough to find the sheet music for the song that you want to learn, you could skip this step because in the sheet music it already has the measures already counted out. But if you don't feel like paying for tab or you don't feel like paying for sheet music like you would get on one of these sites, and you want to learn how to do this, which I highly recommend, you could just go by the lead sheet right here and we could manually count out the measures. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So last week I asked you to tap your feet along to the music. And we are now going to put this into use. Since this song, Leaving on a Jet Plane, is in the 4-4 four, four time signature, which basically means four downbeats per measure, all we have to do is tap our feet and count to four. That's going to tell us where the measures are in a lead sheet. So remember, working off the sheet music is easier because it's all laid out. But if you're stuck with a lead sheet, this is what you have to do. So let's go ahead and tap our feet and count to four. All my bags are packed and I'm ready to go I'm standing here outside your door I hate to wake you up to say goodbye But the dawn is breaking, it's early morn The taxi's waiting, he's blowing his horn Already I'm so lonesome So kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you never let me go I'm leaving on a jet plane I don't know when I'll be back again Oh Alright, so just so you understand this, every time I count back to the number one, that means a new measure begins. Well, I already know a bunch of you are going to ask this question, why are some words or parts of words at the start of some of the sentences highlighted in blue? Well, the answer is because they are sung in the previous measure that's highlighted. Now, this is a big problem with working with lead sheets because most all the lead sheets I've seen write out the sentences correctly instead of the music. Now don't blame me for this because if I were writing out a lead sheet it would look something like this. Somewhere towards the end of the video I'll give you a link to my lead sheet. But the one good thing about lead sheets is, in a simple song like Leaving on a Jet Plane, a chord will be written over a word or part of a word, which indicates to us that that's an, when a new measure begins. Now this is not always the case for more complex music. All right, and finally, the issue of musical interludes. The lead sheets often don't count out pauses or breaks in a vocal, so that's why it's important to count out the measures 
You may be learning words by reading off of a piece of paper, but you also have to learn when to start singing. If there's a pause or break in the vocal, you're going to be playing just the guitar there, so you'd need to count that out as well. Maybe add your own notation, and you got to know when to come back in to sing. So that's very important. That's why we're tapping our feet and counting everything out. All right, putting in the measures, very easy. Uh, in this song, it's in between the chords. Now that I have it laid out properly, this is measure one, this is measure two, measure three, measure four, measure five, measure six, measure seven, measure eight, measure nine. It's in between the chords, in between these chords right here. Okay, that's, that's the measure right there. Measure 10, measure 11, measure 12, and so on and so forth. What I like to do is I like to just simply write out uh, on a sheet of paper uh, just a chord chart, my own handwritten chord chart that looks like this. All right, we are on the home stretch here. All we have to do is insert this pattern into the song, which is very, very easy. First, I'm going to tell you that we're going to use the same pattern that we used in finger picking for beginners. That was a course that I did way back when, back in 2014. If you haven't taken that course and you're new to finger picking, go right here and take that course, okay? You're not going to be totally ready for this song yet because you have to learn your G, C, and D chords, all right? But I have lessons on that as well. If you get started with the picking pattern first, we will go over the, a D chord and we'll go over a G chord. Then I have lessons on here as well, how to play a C chord, all right? So you're all covered with that. Learn the pattern and then learn those three chords. There's only three chords in this song. And so the first chord that we have, that's the, the main uh, chord of the song, is the G chord. And I'm doing a one-fingered G chord, uh, ring finger on the third fret on the sixth string. Okay, that's all I'm doing. And then this is the pattern right here. We'll go over the pattern first. And I'm picking strings six, four, three, six, two, four, three. Once again, that's six, four, three, six, two, four, three. And it's really important to put that rest note in there. Okay, let me count it out and I'll say rest when it comes time to rest. It's the, the, the metronome's still going here and we just are not playing on one of the eight possible beats. Okay, so we're going one, rest, two and three and four and one rest two and three and four and and that's thumb thumb index thumb middle thumb index all right so that's the G chord. For the C chord, all we're doing is we're doing the same exact pattern except we're switching strings. Instead of plucking the sixth string, we're plucking the fifth string as our first note, okay? So that's five, four, three, five, two, four, three. And I'm holding down a C chord on my left hand, all right? Five, rest, four, three, five, two, four, three. And for the D chord, I'm playing a regular D on this. This is the three fingered D chord. And this on the right hand is four, rest, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, rest. Right. 
So what we're going to do is every time we play in the song, every time you see a G chord in the, in the chart, guess what you play? You play one measure of G. That's this. And then for the C chord, when you play see a C chord, guess what you play? And of course, when it comes time to play a D chord, Right, you could hear that I have the click on in the background. Very important that we practice this with a metronome. If you're not practicing with a metronome, um, you could be wasting a lot of time because the metronome really helps all the way around with changing chords, with getting the timing down on your right hand as well. But um, I'll probably do another video on uh, metronome training at some point. I have the metronome set at 60 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and do this song. Here we go. Playing and singing at the same time. It's easier said than done. I'm sure uh, many of you realize that. Um, and that's partly because the phrasing or the timing of the vocal is different than the guitar. All right. So what happens with that is you have to know the guitar part, be able to play the guitar pattern and be almost unconscious about it. So you've got to just practice and practice that and then slowly start trying to add in the vocal, all right? And at first it might seem a little awkward, but the more you know the vocal and memorize it, okay, that's why I said to memorize it, very important, because you don't want to be reading off of a piece of paper the words and then reading off the piece of paper for playing the guitar. Do you see how they don't work? How could you read two things at once? Hey, I'm reading two books at one time. It doesn't work that way. All right. So you either have to memorize one or the other, but the best case scenario would be to memorize both of them. And what you want to do is you want to take line by line. Start with the first line. 
of the song and try to play that. Don't try to do the whole song unless you know you're that good. You could just automatically do it. But it's going to take time. I've had to work at singing and playing the guitar at the same time. It wasn't easy. All right. I've spent years doing it. I wish somebody would have told me, hey, memorize the words, it's going to be easier. Or memorize your guitar part, it's going to be easier. So what you want to do is you also want to keep your tempo down on the metronome. Don't try to play so fast. Go line by line, try to get that, and then try to get in with the transitions. Then expand it, you know, go from one line to two lines to three lines. That's my best advice. So good luck with this. If you need help, let me know. The sheet music is in the end screen, okay? You can get it at the end screen, and I'll also have a link inside of this video in the description area. All right, so have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.